morning. Good morning and welcome to Build 2019. It's fantastic to see you all in Seattle. We're proud to announce today that we're making the conversation transcription capability within Azure Speech Services available as a preview release. Come on, let me show you. We are going to show you this demo using just the microphones built into this laptop and these two smartphones we have in front of us. With these, we create a microphone array in the cloud that enables Azure Speech Services to provide accurate in-person meeting transcription, even without a special meeting device. For the next two minutes, we're going to have a rap battle of sorts, <laughs> but for all of us geeks here in the room. So Heiko is a principal PM on the speech team, and he's going to give us an example of some dev speak. And Yusuf is in healthcare marketing, and he's going to dazzle us with a little bit of healthcare tech jargon. Azure Speech Services are built with VMs running on Azure hypervisors using Ubuntu-based Docker containers that are orchestrated with the Azure Kubernetes service. Azure Speech Services enable a variety of technical capabilities, including ASR, Neural TTS, Microsoft Translator, and related custom services. Microsoft Teams can provide EHR integration through ISV vendors, including Infor Cloverleaf, Redox, and others via the HL7 Fire standard. HL7 Fire is HIPAA, MARS-E, and GDPR compliant. In spite of all the progress, you got to remember, today, most of the conversations that we have are still very brittle. They're truly not multi-turn. The context from turn to turn gets lost, especially when you, you know, human language is complex, uh, is complex where the context sometimes is subtle. So therefore, how do you make sure that the natural language capabilities inside of these personal assistants is capable of having that shared context across a long dialogue versus just a, f a few turns? The second real challenge is today, most of these assistants are command systems where you have to invoke these skills one at a time. What if we can imagine a future where you can cross domains without having to invoke each skill by name? So what is a true multi-domain assistant? And of course, lastly, most importantly, we need a multi-agent world. The idea that you're always going to start with one wake word and one assistant is just not like how we start on the web, for example. Just imagine, what is, what is an open assistant future look like? What do I have today? Here's what your day looks like. Today you have, take a walk outside at 8 a.m., your one-on-one -on -one with Anjali at 10 a.m., lunch with Tom at noon, and your app kickoff at 3 p.m. Uh, go ahead and reschedule my walk to tomorrow at the same time. Sure. I can move take a walk outside to tomorrow at 8 a.m. Is that right? Yeah, that sounds great. Okay, I've moved it to tomorrow. And schedule a cram session with Nicholas and his manager from 9 to 1.30 today. And uh, we're going to need a room in Bellevue. Oh, okay. I'll invite Nicholas Cohn and Michelle Estes to the cram session, and I'll put your meeting in City Center 2605. Does that look good to you? Yeah. And push back my one-on-one -on -one with Anjali to tomorrow. All right, I've booked your meeting. And here are a couple of options to meet with Anjali Bot tomorrow. Is there anything later in the day? Let's see. How about this one? Yeah, that'll work. And is she invited to the app kickoff this afternoon? No, she's not on the invite. No, please send it to her. Okay, I've forwarded the app kickoff to Anjali Bot. Great. Oh, right. After my last meeting today, I schedule 30 minutes to pick up the birthday cake. Sure. Pick up the birthday cake at 4 p.m. Is that right? Yep. And remind me, where is my lunch meeting today? Lunch with Tom is at Liberty Cafe. What's the weather going to be like? It'll be mostly sunny and 71 degrees at Liberty Cafe at noon today. Can we eat outside there? Yes. Liberty Cafe has outdoor seating. And can you send directions to my car? Connecting to car skill. 
Sure, directions to Liberty Cafe have been sent to your car. When's our next review with Cyrus? Your next quarterly review with Cyrus Nafani is Tuesday, June 11th at 10 a.m. Schedule a two-hour dry run with Benjamin McIntosh the Friday before that. All right. Does this work for you? Yep, that looks great. I've scheduled your dry run with Benjamin. Thank you. Happy to help. The new tab page on Microsoft Edge that's customizable by IT shows me my most recently used documents and other corporate resources so they're just a click away. And with Microsoft Search, which is an enterprise search offering using Bing technology and Microsoft Graph, Edge can show me contextually relevant search results from my organization. Let's say I'm looking for my vacation tracking tool. You can see that it's the first result and even includes a snapshot. But what we're excited to announce today is that Edge will offer built-in support for Internet Explorer. Now when I click this link, the site opens in the same window and in the same tab with IE mode. So no more jarring experiences when you hit an internal site that needs Internet Explorer. In the privacy and security settings, I have three options. Depending on which option I pick, Edge adjusts how third parties can track me across the web. Unrestricted is a great option if you're fine with how things work today. Strict is a good option for those who would prefer to block all third-party trackers, even if that means some limitations. The balance setting blocks trackers from sites you haven't visited or don't give you the right level of transparency or control of your data. We're working on a feature called collections. I'm actually looking for a camera for my knees and trying to collect some photography tips. So here I am uh, on a page. As I look, I can start to drag and drop content. And I can also switch tabs. And I can drag and drop text as well. And once I'm done looking at uh, the content that I have, I can uh, choose from one of the options that I've got. So you can see I can email, copy the clipboard. But I'm going to go with Export to Word and show you how it works. Edge creates a clean document, even automatically includes citations. How cool is that? Now let me open another collection I'd started earlier so you can see how Export to Excel works. These are some of the cameras I'd been saving up to compare earlier. Going back into Share, I'm going to click on Export to Excel. Collections does all the copy and pasting for me and categorizes it for me into a table that lets me do quick side-by-side -side comparison. The Fluid Framework is a new set of technologies that developers can use to build experiences for any browser that break down barriers between people and barriers between apps. My colleague Chika here is typing on a machine backstage, but her session is going through a data center in the central United States. Chika is working in one of these four browsers. You'll notice Edge and Chrome both on the screen. But it is so fast, you might not actually be able to tell which one. She's actually using the Edge browser in the upper left. When I do some quick drawing, each of my key uh, drawings is, takes up quite a bit more data than regular plain text. We put Chica's screen side by side with mine. You'll see the latency is so low, it's hard to see the difference as we draw. Sorry. Great. As I was typing that text, hopefully you noticed that it was being translated into nine different languages, one of the each screens that you have over above. Um, you'll see that uh, Chica is actually backstage editing data. Of course, I can edit data right here in the main document. And what's happening, one of us is working in Teams, Chica backstage. I'm working in Word. And together, we're collaborating on the same data on the same underlying table. Later this year, this technology will come to Microsoft 365 Experiences and be exposed to developers through an SDK. I'm excited to show you, our fellow developers, how we at Spatial have been able to enrich our existing holographic collaboration app with HoloLens 2, Azure Spatial Anchors, the Microsoft Graph, and Teams. Why don't we upgrade this to a live spatial meeting to get everyone on the same page? I'm actually just going to click over to the Spatial tab in Teams, and I get this really cool 3D dollhouse view. I'm going to click into the room where I can see everybody, but since I have a HoloLens 2 here, why don't I take this off a 2D screen into a 3D meeting? All I have to do is scan the QR code in the corner. I'm going to put on the device and scan the code. Here we go. Oops. Hey, Amanda, what's up? It looks like you're already in here. 
Yep, I'm here in my office also wearing a HoloLens 2. So you'll see me in the room show up as an avatar. And all of our content that you just saw from that team channel is already up here on the wall. You can even see some of the comments thanks to the Microsoft Graph API. Cool. And with the new finger hand tracking in HoloLens 2, it's so easy to quickly triage content. So I can quickly just grab a document off the wall and toss it right up there on our shared workspace so we can all take a look. And if I want Amanda to check out something, I can just pull it off the wall and toss it to her. What do you think of that one, Amanda? Wow, that looks great. And just to recap what happened here, I grabbed a holographic image on the wall as a real person in this room and threw it to an avatar who could be anywhere in the world. And let's make this life-size and zoom this up a little bigger. And you know, Amanda, I'm thinking, why don't we show off the new freehand annotation capabilities and give her some accessories? Absolutely. I think she really could use a bracelet and of course, the finishing touch, a HoloLens. Everyone needs a HoloLens. Awesome. Oh, hey, Lynn, it looks like Lynn just joined. Hey, everyone. I love this. Joining from my PC, I'm still able to participate in the experience, even without a HoloLens. So are you ready to see what I've been working on? Yeah, let's check it out. Since I've joined from my laptop via the spatial tab in Teams you saw earlier, I can easily browse and upload content directly from my PC and upload it to the meeting. Check out this 3D model of a hover pack. Sweet. This is cool. You know, Amanda, since this is mixed reality, why don't you uh, jump in and give it a spin? Of course, let's try it out. Wow, it's even cooler on the inside. Oh, this is so dope. I love it. Great work, Lynn. With Azure Spatial Anchors, this mixed reality experience shares a map across HoloLens and ARKit and ARCore. This means that I can have the most immersive experience on a HoloLens, or I can use this Android phone here to not only see what everyone else is seeing, but actively participate and modify the content as well. I can't wait to see the magic you build, but first I want to leave you with a sneak peek to some magic our team is creating right outside this convention center. Thank you all very, very much. I have a fantastic build.